PERT and CPM are two different forms of network charts which are represented differently and calculate schedule in a slightly different way. But both have their origins in the 1940s and the way that the famous Manhattan Project was planned. Question is, what's the difference? My intention is not to give you a detailed explanation of either the program evaluation and review technique, or PERT, or the critical path method, or CPM. Rather, I want to indicate the answer to the question, what's the difference between the two? Because they look very similar, fulfill a very similar function. And frankly, uh, the terms are often used broadly interchangeably. So to the extent that there is a precise definition of PERT and of CPM, what then is the difference? Both the program evaluation and review technique and the critical path method were developed in the 1950s, although as far as I can find out, the PERT method was developed slightly earlier, perhaps a couple of years. It was developed by the US Navy and the consultants Booz Allen Hamilton, whereas the critical path method was developed in the commercial sector by DuPont and Remington Rand. The PERT method represents activities as lines with nodes representing the relationship between activities. So fundamentally, a dependency or a sequence of activities is connected by a node. In the critical path method, we represent the activities by those nodes by writing them into boxes. The lines or arrows represent the linkages between activities and therefore the sequence of dependencies. A big difference is the way that the PERT method and the CPM estimate the duration of activities. In the program evaluation and review technique, we make three point estimates for the duration of every activity. That is to say, we estimate a most likely duration, also a minimum likely duration, and a maximum likely duration. By combining this pessimistic or longest plausible duration with an optimistic or shortest plausible duration and our best estimate, we can calculate another new estimate which represents the right balance between these different views. There are numerous simple calculations that can be applied, but the most common is to take one times the optimistic estimate plus four times the base estimate plus one times the pessimistic estimate and divide all of that by six. Typically, we would not expect the distribution of estimates to be symmetric. That is to say that usually I'd expect that the pessimistic estimate would be further from the most likely estimate than the optimistic estimate. There are a number of different ways that we can calculate our expected duration based on these three estimates. The most common is a simple calculation, which adds together one times the optimistic, four times the most likely, and one times the pessimistic estimate, and then divides by six. The critical path method uses single point estimates for the duration of activities and therefore it is far more appropriate where the activities are better defined and better understood. So we say that the PERT method is a probabilistic approach, appropriate where there is high uncertainty, and the CPM is a deterministic approach, appropriate where there is lower uncertainty and more confidence about durations. This makes PERT more suitable for novel, unusual and high risk projects, whereas CPM is more suitable for familiar, repetitive projects, doing things again and again and again, or things that are very similar to something we've already done. PERT was originally designed to optimize and control the schedule only. And it does this by understanding the spread of possible schedule outcomes for each activity. 
CPM was originally designed to help to control both schedule and budget and to understand the trade-offs between the two. It uses concepts like critical and non-critical activities and float and dependency. And we have videos on dependencies and on float and on schedule optimization by resource leveling and resource smoothing that you can look at. I'll put links to them in the description. Finally, because of all the characteristics I've described, it's worth saying that PERT is far more popular in the R&D sector where we're doing radically new projects. Whereas CPM tends to find its greatest use in the construction sector where we're doing things that are broadly familiar because we've been building buildings for many, many years. To sum up, these tools are increasingly only used in highly structured, large projects. Developing the tool, using the tool and using all of the estimates is time consuming and a skilled task and is therefore not justified in smaller and more nebulous business oriented or sometimes in software projects where we're now increasingly using things like agile frameworks and issuing the use of detailed estimates in favour of incrementalism, adaptability and iteration. This means that the differences between CPM and PERT are frankly becoming blurred and less relevant. Fewer and fewer project managers understand the details or indeed need to understand the details of each methodology. This is especially the case because now software can do all of the heavy lifting for us. It prompts us to put in the estimates that it wants us to make. We put those estimates in and it then uses the formulas and the formalism to do the calculations it needs to do. Indeed, increasingly, we will see artificial intelligence making the estimates as well. We're already seeing it in sophisticated construction project management software. While traditionally PERT is used where we are most concerned with schedule in the face of uncertainty and CPM is used where we want to understand the balance between schedule and budget priorities, I think what we are now seeing is an increasing hybridization of the two approaches. Tools will typically draw from elements of both of these two OG network chart methodologies. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be making loads more great project management videos for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.